College Football 25 has only been out for about a week and a half, and they've already released their first update, which we're going to cover in this video. I'm also going to give my early criticisms of the game, both good and bad. But let's be real, College Football 25 has been f***ing crazy so far, with all the clips you've seen of people losing games in the wildest ways, all these interceptions and fumbles and how hard it is to play defense. The good news is EA, like I said, did mention an update to fix some of the bugs that have been in the game so far for only the first week and a half. And those bugs were to be expected. When a game first comes out, sometimes they go through a tech test. They didn't go through a tech test this year. EA yeah, just released it to all of you to experience the problems firsthand. But at least we got our first communication from EA Sports within a matter of two weeks of the game being released. So before I get into that, I'm happy to announce I will be part of the 4Verts Substack. 4Verts will be your source for all things college football related. I highly recommend you subscribe to the 4Verts Substack. I think it's a little bit better than having all your subscriptions on YouTube and getting distracted by the shorts and other content on YouTube, whereas Substacks get all of your information in one place, all of the articles listed. You can filter them out and search them. 4Verts has already grown to 18,000 subscribers over the matter of a few weeks, and each article has been getting over 7,000 views and we're still growing. So before we get into the video, make sure you head over to 4Verts and subscribe to the Substack. And you guys can turn your notifications on or off if you want to get emails. Last thing I'll mention is you can go through the Substack app. And it's a lot easier to read it on your phone that way. Or if you don't have a Twitter, going through the Substack is a great way to read this college football information as well. If most of you know my content already, I do the MLB The Show cards. And I'm going to start doing giveaways for College Football 25 Ultimate Team cards as well. So if you want to be a part of the next giveaway, make sure you do subscribe to my YouTube channel and the 4 Verts Substack so they can be on the lookout for the first giveaway. All right, now let's get into what we got to talk about the game so far. All right, so gameplay. I'm going to go over my quick list of pros and cons, or if you're not really familiar with any vocabulary outside of social media, the W and L list. So my first W is the passing mechanisms. Now, I can't remember. The last NCAA football game I played was NCAA 12. I can't remember how many passing uh, options they had, but I got to say, the... Placement and accuracy has been such a blessing to this game once you learn how to use it. And if you don't, I really recommend looking up a tutorial video. There's plenty of creators out there who did really good videos on it, and we can do one here as well, but I got to give credit to them. So once you learn how to use it, you can really manipulate where you're putting a ball and how much zip you're putting on it and how much you're leading them. That's something I never experienced in previous games, but you can really figure out how much you want to lead your receiver by pressing L2 and then using the right analog stick to drag that stick over. And once you change your player back to the wide receiver, I find it a little bit easier to catch now that there's more catching options. You can do an aggressive catch, you can do a secure catch or a catch and run. And I know those were in previous games and they've been in Madden before. Uh, so this is my first time using it. I think it still needs a little bit of tweaking. Uh, there's been plenty of times where I feel like I tried to do an aggressive catch and nothing happened. But overall, I do think it's better that there's more options for passing and catching than just the revamped and the classic versions of both of those things. So I just took some clips of the gameplay I played for testing purposes and just to have fun with the game, obviously. I noticed one thing that's kind of a con for me is switching players. You never really know who you're going to get when there's like a conglomerate of players in the middle of linebackers and D-backs and things like that. I find it hard to pinpoint the exact player you want to switch to so that you can either make a tackle or make a defensive play, make an interception. Um, so that's one thing that, you know, even though it says to switch player, hit circle and use the analog stick to kind of aim at which player you want. I find that really hard to do when there's a lot of, like I said, players in one spot. So if you want to make a tackle, I just feel like in this example right here, you can see I thought I was switching to the number one right there on the right, that D back. Instead, it switched to the safety up ahead. And then I ended up diving for the tackle and diving at basically nobody. Right. So in this in this situation, you know, there's a couple of things that as a player and as a user in general, you think one thing's going to happen and you think that the guy with the highlighted icon, which is that D back in that corner, if you switch player, it's going to go to him. Now, obviously, that's just an ability that he has. But mentally, when you see that logo, you kind of think, OK, that's the player I'm about to use if I switch player. So I'm wondering if the switch player, when there's a lot of players around one spot, is that they put the best player in the best position to make the play that's who you're going to switch to but uh, i really don't know i will say the one thing that has been a, a big w is I, I can't believe i'm saying that now but like the strafe button with the ability to sprint with the strafe button 
Um, I know you can do that in games before, but I think the strafe button is going to be one of your best friends in this game defensively. Being able to sort of backpedal and sprint side to side with that button um, helps massively. Also, the different type of tackling, breakdown tackle, aggressive tackle, hit stick, and things like that. Uh, I've been using the breakdown tackle a lot in open field, obviously, but also in situations like this where there's even there's a lot of players. Um, I just feel that that wide receiver, if I feel like he's breaking tackles all game, you know, I use that breakdown tackle. It makes it a lot easier. And I just I hate missing tackles. I don't know about you guys. It's like really annoying when you you select your defender, you eye him up, you line it up, and then you, you dive and miss, and then it's like an 80-yard touchdown. So that is one thing I hope they fix with the switch player. It it's, becomes a little more easier to manipulate that or to tell who you're going to be switching to. There's just another perfect example of the placement and accuracy mode of passing. And here I'm able to, you know, lightly tap the button, lead my receiver just a little bit to the right with the right analog stick while pressing L2, and then doing a run and catch by simply pressing square when I'm ready to catch the ball. I don't even have to switch over to the receiver in order to do that. I can just press square while the ball is in the air and while it's close to him and he's about to catch it. And then you can catch a run. Works a lot in open field. In that situation, if there was a safety over the top, I would want to do an aggressive catch so that I can jump up at my highest point and catch the ball. Now, the other thing is too, if there was a safety there, I could also hold L2 and L1 and the L1 button will make sure that pass gets up and high so that everyone who needs to catch that ball would have to jump for it. So it's a high placement pass. This one has to be a bug that everyone's experiencing. You saw my defender right there. He was in position to make the play. And I kind of feel like if I let the, control, the computer control my player, he would have either swatted that ball or made a pick. But you can see here, once I switch to him and I press the swap button or the catch button on defense, it just straight up, he misses it. He just straight up misses it. The receiver gets it. I'm pretty sure it goes straight through his hands. We'll see here in the replay. But I think, you know, a lot of people have been complaining about EA and Madden. And I believe this is probably one of the things that they're alluding to, um, that the gameplay is, is just... <laughs> It's just really faulty sometimes, man, even against the computer. I know Ultimate Team is going to be a lot more challenging with the online servers and everything. Um, but, you know, if situations happen like these, it's going to turn a lot of people, even casual players, away from wanting to play the game if it's happening offline game modes like this. So here's a big one. Pass interference in any football game I've played, uh, it almost never happens. I got one call uh, the entire time I've played and in, in the several hours that I've played this game already. But this is just something that is, is simply an error. Uh, it, it's just a regular, normal video game error. It seems like there's not an easy way to fix this. Like, how do you program that? Oh, if my guy bumps into him, you know, that's incidental contact, I guess, in the term, you know, in football terms, but it still would be pass interference if the ball's in the air like that. Now, in a video game, when there's incidental contact, it's just, oh, you know, one object runs into another object. Uh, for them to program a flag into that, I guess, would be difficult. So... This is this is a major con though because you know I feel like I placed that ball somewhat well enough for it to be competitive and it ended up being all all the D backs ball right there once he bumps into him. So I don't know how they fix this. Um, hopefully they have some sort of patch for it, but I doubt it. Okay, another huge pro and a W for me is the mini games. The mini games are a great way to practice all those different types of catching methods and passing methods. So if you want to take the placement and accuracy, you know, uh, skill set into a place where you can just freely use it and not worry about having the results in your face. Go to the, the mini games and test them out in all the passing practice modes because hitting these targets does become really hard, obviously when they're moving, but then once you start to figure out the placement and accuracy method of passing, you'll really understand it with these targets and how to get the ball up high to hit those higher targets and how to hit the, the bullseye when you need it, how to lead your receivers. So I think the mini games and how many of them there are uh, specifically the gauntlet. The gauntlet's very fun. It's a combination of all the mini games. You have to stay alive and keep your lives alive uh, to finish and get the highest score you can. Now, the other thing about the mini games is you'll learn a lot by playing them with like, if you're doing Road to the Show or uh, you're doing Road to Glory, um, you'll learn a lot about how to, you know, swim move if you're a linebacker or a defensive back or something like that. And you'll learn more about like blocking if you're on offense, if you're a receiver or a running back, uh, because a lot of game modes, they reward you for things like that. So now this is also the first time we're seeing the expanded bracket in a college football video game. We didn't have it in revamped because it didn't even exist. And all of the years that have passed by, we're finally now having a college football playoff in the video game. I think it's very fun. 
the first round of games is at the team's home campus, which is cool. And, uh, you know, that's how it's going to be in real life, too. So um, in Dynasty mode, from my experience, I think it's been great. I think recruiting has been surprisingly easy. In past games, I didn't care about recruiting. I always turned the auto recruiting on and let the computer do it for me. I think this year it's really easy to go through recruiting. So let me go through a couple of steps right, right now. So in this Dynasty, we already went through the whole season and, you know, we did it on All-Americans. So getting to the championship with the 90 overall team wasn't too difficult um other than some of the gameplay blunders that i showed you earlier but now that we're in off season uh you know the recruiting still stays the, the it, mostly the same except you just have more time now um so there's probably more prospects as well so basically with the recruiting it's really easy you go to the prospect list and it's going to show you what your team needs everyone highlighted in red is a team need um so it seems like almost everybody everyone's name who's already crossed out is going to be committed to a school or you have too many people on your prospect list so you can go to the left there if you have a target on them that means you already put them on your list if you want to take them off and free up space for more prospects you can do that and then you can go back to the recruiting board and see who has already committed to a school so you can take them off your prospect list and pursue other prospects so i just added two guys from the prospect list once i go back to the recruiting board and go to their names I'm going to select their name. It's going to show me the overview. You just got to select the bumper or R1 to get over to the actions. So the first thing you want to do is offer them a scholarship. It only costs you five hours, uh, which is the least amount of hours you can do with an action. All right, so you have a lot of hours at the top there. You can see in the top right once I get this out of the way. So all of my targets are filled up 35 out of 35. I have plenty of hours to spend. So in the off season, I just want to go through and select you know what my team needs and the highest star recruit i can get and spend as many hours on them as i can you also have 35 scholarships i haven't used all mine yet so i want to make sure i go ahead and do that now if you start doing this and you find that it's kind of boring or you don't like it i believe you can just turn on auto recruiting and it looks like you can just by going over to dynasty settings so if you, you get bored of the recruiting you don't like it you're just not having fun doing it you can just turn auto recruiting on and it'll take care of it for you the one thing I like about Dynasty 2 is the advancing week doesn't take nearly as long as it did in previous games, so it only takes a couple of seconds so you can advance the week. Super Sim within game, you can uh, simulate to the next possession, the next quarter, or to the end of game. You can also just play big moments in the game, or you can play the entire game. It's up to you. So if there's certain ways you want to play through a season, if you want to get through an entire season within a matter of like a couple of days or even one day, you can kind of simulate while still playing some of the moments and have fun with it that way. And my last item on this list, which is a pro, is the communication from EA Sports. With under two weeks of the game being released, they already have a communication about some updates that they noticed some bugs in the game or other people reported the bugs or they've been communicating back to EA Sports about them. But they've already looked forward to fixing some of these in the next update. And they've already shared some workarounds for some current ones. One of them is the conferences in Dynasty mode. So they offer some workarounds for adding teams to the Pac-12 and then generating the rest of the conference and divisions. And then just some other workarounds you see here. All right, so there's some other smaller stuff so like with the audio, uh, incorrect commentary. Some of you might have experienced that already where, um, you know, it, whether it's this one in particular where they're mentioning Utah or you've noticed other ones, make sure you do report them to EA. It looks like they will be somewhat on top of it, at least for the early parts of the game so that they can keep good rapport with the fans and the users. But then there's some other things like logos and dynasty fixes that are small. And um, one of them is also the super sim logic, uh, which we talked about earlier, but they did notice that a lot of FCS schools were uh, sort of upsetting the um, power five schools. So make sure you do check out the EA sports Twitter page uh, and their, their website as well to see the rest of the updates. So I didn't want to go over too much today because there's so much to go over in this game. We're going to get into Ultimate Team. We're going to get into Road to Glory. And we're going to go into um, Team Builder next probably and build a couple of teams. Because that's one thing I really enjoy about this game is making your custom team. Now, from what I've seen online, they first mentioned that copyright will be um, removed from the game if you try to put it into Team Builder. But that's just because they've already reached out to a lot of FCS schools and getting them into the game. But it seems like you can still import them and it hasn't been a problem so far. So if you want to implement your you know, homeschool FCS team, if they're not in the game yet, I would give it a try. And if it gets removed, then, uh, you know, it's likely that they'll be in the game at some point later on in the future. But yeah, guys, I'm really excited to play this game a lot, a lot more. And um, I'm really happy that we're, we got this game back and the community is very well involved in the game. 
Uh, so if you guys have anything to add on to it, make sure you drop it in the comments. Make sure you do follow the Four Verts Substack to be a part of the card giveaways that I'm going to be doing. And uh, yeah, I think you'll also like the Substack a lot. I have enjoyed it so far, getting the emails. Um, so it's it's really good stuff. I think you guys would like it too. All right, with that being said, if you guys want to see me have any video ideas you want me to do, whether it's you know game modes or uh, bringing a certain team to the, the championship, let me know in the comments down below. And I'll see you guys on the next one.